Welcome to Salient Systems User Training. Today we will show you how to use the Complete View web client. This includes logging into a Complete View deployment, how to use Live View to view your cameras live, and using playback to search through and export recorded video. The web client can be used with most modern browsers, and you can access your cameras and recorded video using either a PC or a Mac. So let's get started. To access the web client, begin by opening your browser and navigating to webclient.salientsys.com. From the two options on this page, select the web client that matches the general version of your management server. On the login screen, enter the fully qualified domain name or the IP address for your management server. Then enter in a username and a password. If you are using Windows Active Directory username and password, toggle the switch for Active Directory. When you're ready, select Login. And once logged in, you'll see the Live View module for the web client. There are two navigation areas in Live View the top menu bar, and the left navigation panel. The top menu bar has icons on the left that allow you to switch between Live View and Playback for recorded video. And on the right side, the lock icon displays your connection status. Selecting the Map View icon will take the cameras from your currently selected map and place them in the View screen. The Start Tour icon will begin an automatic tour of any configured views. And the main menu gives you options to change your view settings, see about information on the web client, access the web client's help files, update your password, and log out. Selecting settings will open an additional window that allows you to change settings for what you see in live view, Playback, and Global, which will affect both Live View and Playback. Finally, the Advanced tab allows you to set your minimum logging levels, and you can choose whether or not to display servers in your cameras list. Selecting Save after you've made any changes in settings will automatically apply those the next time you log in to the web client. The left-hand navigation panel contains three areas, Search, Regions, and PTZ. The Search section allows you to search for any camera or view that is currently configured on the server, and you can select those and it will change what you're seeing in the view screen. Selecting the funnel icon or filter allows you to determine whether you see cameras, views, and maps or both, and you can also sort any of your results in ascending or descending order. The Regions section contains all of your views and maps that are currently configured, and if you're using Regions and Sites, you'll see a list of your regions and sites along with any associated views and maps for those regions and sites. Selecting any of these views will switch what you're seeing in the view screen. Additionally, there is a list of your servers and cameras on each server. Selecting individual cameras will display that camera in the view screen. The last section is the PTZ control. PTZ allows you to use digital PTZ on all cameras, but only mechanical PTZs will have the full range of motion, focus and iris controls, and PTZ presets can be selected, programmed, and renamed for PTZ cameras. In the camera view screen, you'll see all the cameras from the view that you have selected. 
Hovering a camera tile displays a full screen toggle at the bottom right and an icon to take snapshots of the current camera view. Snapshots are saved in your default download folder and automatically named using the camera's GUID and a date and timestamp. If you left click a camera tile with your mouse, this selects the camera stream as indicated by the blue title bar and the check mark in the top left corner. Once a single camera is selected, the PTZ functions can be accessed. To use the digital PTZ function, you must first zoom in on the camera and then you can pan and tilt to either side within the view screen. Mechanical PTZs do not require the zoom. Right-clicking on any camera tile opens an options menu. On the options menu, you can take a snapshot of the current camera view. Selecting recorded video will let you search for recorded video from that camera stream in either a list or thumbnail format. Frame rate allows you to adjust the live view frame rate for the selected camera, but regardless of the frame rate you select, live view will never exceed the frame rate being recorded. View options allows you to toggle between letterbox and stretch to fit. Go to preset displays the digital or programmed camera preset positions, and you can select them from the list to send the camera to that position. Live stream can be used to toggle the display of stream properties on a camera, and once they're displayed, you have the option to adjust where they appear on the camera tile. These are not recorded with your video. The closed tile option will remove the selected tile from the display. You can remove multiple tiles using the closed tile feature. And once tiles have been hidden, you'll also have the ability to restore the closed tiles. The final area of live view is the map display. The maps that are displayed can be panned and moved around within the view screen, and you can use your middle mouse roller to zoom in or to zoom out. Hovering any of the camera icons on the map will display a live view of that camera. At the bottom right of the map screen, you have the ability with this icon to select cameras. This will allow you to draw a box selecting specific cameras from the map, and then you can select the live view icon to place those cameras that you selected in the live view screen. Next, we're going to move into playback and see how we can search for and export recorded video. To access playback, select the playback icon from the top menu bar. In playback, use the left navigation panel to select a camera to view recorded video. Cameras can be selected from the search feature by selecting one from the list or typing a name of a camera to locate it. The filter allows you to display the search results in ascending or descending order. Cameras can also be selected from the region section by extending your list down, locating a camera, and selecting it. The camera you select appears in the search parameters area. The default search duration is 24 hours of video, but this can be adjusted using the drop down list. The detailed search option provides tools to select the time zone for the search and to set specific start and end times and dates for your search. Once your camera is selected and search parameters are set, select the search button 
and you'll see your recorded video below. In the search results window, the table shows the type of video that was recorded, the start time and end time of each clip, a description of the video if the video was recorded as a result of a motion or alarm trigger, and the file size of the video clip. Selecting any of the clips will begin the playback in the playback window. When a clip is in playback, the digital PTZ controls are available and they work the same as in Live View. Since all playback video is digital, you'll have to zoom in first in order to use the PTZ controls, and then you can pan and tilt the camera within the view screen. At the bottom left of the search results screen, you have the option to filter the search results by video type by selecting or deselecting the appropriate color. Green is for continuous video, and deselecting it will only show motion and alarm video. If I want to filter and only see my continuous video, I can deselect motion, and that will show me all of my continuous clips. On the right side, you'll see a sequential playback, which will begin playing all of your videos in order. And when you have a video selected, you can use the arrows to select the previous video for play or move to the next video in the list. In the playback window, you have controls that allow you to scrub through the video timeline by dragging the play indicator. You can adjust the playback speed. You can seek to the beginning of the video clip and also step back frame by frame. The play indicator will play the video or stop the video. You also have the ability to step forward frame by frame. And you can seek to the end of the video clip. The last two icons are for exporting and snapshots. Selecting the export icon will save the entire video clip to your download folder. There is no trim feature with exports from the web client, so the entire clip is exported. If you have video that is several hours long, that's the amount of video that will go to your downloads folder. Selecting the snapshot icon functions identically to Live View and saves the image in your default download folder. To switch your search results from list view to thumbnails, select the appropriate icon in the search results title bar. The video from the search period is displayed using time interval thumbnails and selecting any thumbnail will begin playback. The time interval of each thumbnail can be adjusted using the drop down menu at the bottom of the thumbnails. The visible size of each thumbnail can be adjusted with the sliding bar, and the view area can be adjusted by sliding the frame left or right. The sequential playback and the next and previous clip arrows work the same as in list view. Now with thumbnails, you can drill in on each time interval. To do this, select the plus sign on a thumbnail, which drills in on the selected time interval. Each thumbnail in my display shows 10 minutes of video. Drilling in on one thumbnail will break that 10 minute interval into one minute clips. Selecting a one minute clip and drilling in again breaks that time period into 60 one second clips. Selecting the minus symbol will drill back out and I can return to the original time interval. 
The playback controls for thumbnails work the same as in list view. Snapshots may be taken from thumbnail video. However, exporting video clips can only be done from the list search. And that is how you use live view and playback in the Complete View web client. If you found this video helpful, follow us for more job aid and tech tip videos. If you have an idea for a future video, let us know by sending an email to training at saliencysys.com. Thanks for watching.